The APC primary in Ondo State has been slated for the 25th of April 2024. The party also pegged its expression of interest forms at 10 million naira and nomination form at 14 million naira. And that amounts to 50 million naira for aspirants who are seeking the party's ticket for the election. One of the governorship aspirants in the APC, Olusho Laoke, has said it's his turn to become governor of the state. He tasked the National Working Committee and State Working Committee of the party to conduct a free, fair, credible and transparent election. Mr. Oke has also promised to use agriculture to tackle unemployment and alleviate poverty in Ondo State. Part of my career, ranging over 35 years in politics, I've gathered experience. Because I've been a party administrator, I will know how to manage party members as a government. Because I've been a lawmaker, I will know how to manage lawmakers in the state. And because I've occupied the negative positions, I will hit the ground running immediately I'm elected. Business as usual cannot take us further. It is for this reason I've articulated my manifesto. Olushola Oke, okay. SAN, joins me live from our Boja studio to discuss his developmental policies. Should he eventually emerge candidate of the APC and subsequently become governor in November? Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Mr. Oke, okay, on the program. Thank you for having me here. And I also thank the viewers for watching this program. All right. You say it's your turn to become governor, and that begins with your party's primary, which is about one month away. What are your chances of clinching the tickets of the APC? Thank you very much. The APC at this moment is searching for the bad hands to fly is flags in any election. Part of what will be considered will be experience, will be knowledge of the environment, will be contact with the people. It will also be knowledge of the people the candidate wants to administer. I believe I have a chance in this contest because I've lived all my life in those states. I have been part of their deniers, their suffering and benefits. I have been in the system for a long time, one time a member of the National Assembly, one time representative of Ondo State on the governing board of NDDC, as one time chairman and chief executive of the Ondo State Oil Mineral Producing Area Development Commission, OSOPADEC. I have been a party administrator at the highest level, so I've always been in contact with the people. I've demonstrated in the positions I've occupied my love and affection for the environment and for the people of Ondo State. I believe, therefore, at this critical period, when Mr. President is trying to fix Nigeria, on those states to be part of it requires a seasoned individual, an experienced individual, an individual has demonstrated commitment to their plight in the past and whom they can trust in bringing a new order a new song to the leaves of the people of Ondo State, the need. I therefore, having regard to my past services to the APC, as one time director of campaign of the President, the President Buhari Campaign Council, being a member of President Tinubu's Presidential Campaign Council, having served in different committees and in different capacities, I believe that the party this time around who put me forward. I have a very bad, bright chance to answer your question straight. Well, you have reeled out quite a, a rich CV, 
But then one of the candidates you will have to contend with is incumbent governor of Ondo State, Lucky Ayidatiwa. And you know what they say about the power of incumbency. How do you hope to appeal to the conscience and get the support of members of your party in Ondo State to put you forward as a candidate in the election? Thank you very much. No doubt, the incumbent governor, he has, he has constitutional right to be interested and he has expressed interest in the same office. He's a brother, a friend, and compatriot. He's eminently entitled to express a desire to continue in that office. But like I indicated earlier, the people of Ondo State are looking for a new order. They want a new song. They need a man who will deliver the dividend of democracy to them. They need a man that will address the myriad of challenges facing the state at this moment. Created in 1976, Ondo State is in deficit in many respects. I have been around the state I've traversed the state, all the communities, not less than seven different occasions, from the dates of Governor Lumilua to the date of Agagu to the date of Rotimi Akredulu, and the dates I've contested as a candidate in governorship election. Notwithstanding that we have a Nikuben governor, I believe that the people of the state will look forward to a man that has been around with them who is familiar with their problems, who will be able to render relevant solutions to these problems. A man that has spent all his life trying to give them comfort, succor, and a man that will be able to identify their peculiar problems and be able to give solutions to it. And so, on the ground of my experience, on the ground that I've lived with the people, on the ground that I've served the people in diverse capacities, on the ground that I've earned their trust over the years, I think I will be preferred to every other aspirant, including the incumbent governor. I think I'll be preferred. Now, what do you consider to be priority that the next administration needs to focus on to make Ondo State a better state? Thank you. Nigeria generally made the entire universe we are going through economic crisis. As you will have seen in Nigeria today, Mr. President is doing everything possible to address decay of decades, to be able to redirect our economy, to be able to improve the welfare of the people. He has brought on board a number of policy decisions the effect of which we are expecting to come in and to give succor to the people of Nigeria. In on those states, like I mentioned earlier, no doubt our last governor, before he was called to glory, did his best as a governor of that state to improve the environment and the welfare of the people. But he came at a time when the country and the entire universe was facing, were facing different challenges. For instance, he came in, he was inaugurated at the time of economic meltdown universally. After that, there was the COVID-19 menace. Yet, he has been able to demonstrate love and commitment to the people. At this moment, when there appears to be hunger, there, have, there appears to be deficiency in infrastructure, what on those state needs is a return to the land. Since 1976, when the state was created, no concerted effort has been made by any administration to open up where our resources reside. During Chief Obafe Miawolowa, the entire Southwest was known and its prosperity lied in agriculture. Today, in Ondo state, the same footpath that our farmers were using to assess their farmland 
I see the same food paths that are being used. We need to open up our forest resources. We need to open up our coastal resources. And we need to open up our mineral resources. Before now, in the days of adjusting, undoubted had reputable companies. He found ceramic. The Nairobi in Akure, the Premier Meter in Ondo, cocoa processing in uh, Ilaulu Jiokebo, oil mill in Okitipupa, and all the glass in Ibokoda. All these companies had gone under over the years. It means, therefore, that only government today remains the producer of wealth and employer of labor. And because of oversaturation in the employment in the government, those who are there are not in a hurry to leave. There is grave menace of, of unemployment in Ondo State. These companies, while they were there, they were generating wealth, they were generating income, they were generating employment for our people. Their absence means that the standard of living of the people has gone down. There is hunger, there is starvation everywhere. For us to be able to address all of this, we, the Ondoste people needs and deserves a government that will go back to the past where agriculture will become a major stay of our economy. As governor of Ondo State, if given the opportunity, and I pray that I'm giving, I intend to open roads into the farmlands so that our people can access very easily. I intend to take a mat to build barracks for the Amateku inside the farmlands so that they can give our people a sense of security. I intend to build in the, farm, the various farmlands guest houses where farmers, if they don't intend to return to town within a week, can reside. The, the effect of all of this is that the youth, the younger generation, will be attracted to farming. And then we'll be able to generate wealth, we'll be able to generate employment, we'll be able to generate income. We'll be able to reduce the poverty level in the state. Not this alone. I've observed, and this is in the entire Southwest, that for many years, now over two, three decades, we have abandoned technical and vocational education. This means, in essence, that our youth who could not make it to the university are not building capacity. What you have in turn now is increased rate in criminality because it's a common adage that the heart of an idle person is the workshop of the devil. I intend to revive technical education. I intend to revive vocational education so that I can build the capacity of our youth and then they can secure gainful employment. And by that, I will reduce unemployment. I will also reduce criminality in society. One major problem in Ondo State is that even though we are a state with a very long coastline, we have been acting and behaving like a landlocked state. I intend to return to the road path to development which Governor Lucia Guagago initiated at his own time, which that is to expose the coastal resources of Ondo State to investors. By doing this, we'll develop our coastlines and we'll be able to attract national and multinational investors that will invest in the coastal area, which is very rich in natural resources, and then we'll be able to generate employment for our people. Our educational standard, and I want to give it again to our departed governor, when he came on board, he focused on revamping our uh, nose diving educational sector. He did a lot in that regard, but a lot is still left to be done. The governor we need at this time must be a governor that will reduce the yearning gaps in our education level, that will reduce the yearning gap in the health sector, that will reduce the yearning gap in infrastructure, and embark on projects that will empower our people, that will embark on projects that will add value to our agriculture, that will embark on, on projects that will revive 
our agricultural, the agri sector of our economy. And I believe that this will be given priority under my administration. If we do this, we we'll generate wealth, we we'll generate income, we we'll generate employment, we we'll reduce poverty level, and we will reduce criminality level too. You have contested for the position of governor three different times. And I must say that you have actually also been moving between parties. Why should the people of Ondo State, uh, first now the APC, trust you with the party's ticket? And secondly, the people of Ondo State trust you with their mandates? Well, thank you. Yes. I have contested governorship twice and I have also been an aspirant once. It is all of these that combine to give me the experience I have been talking about. In the course of my aspiration on those occasions, I had to traverse the entire length and breadth of Ondo State. I had to also interface with the people in their urban and rural communities. And that is why my name, Chief Olu Solauke, is a household name in Ondo State today. I believe very strongly that this is added advantage to my aspiration on this occasion. Moving in between parties. I've been in APC for a long time enough. I mentioned earlier that I have served in diverse committees of the party. I was the director of campaign for President Buhari in the entire Southwest. And I was also a member of the Presidential Campaign Council of President Aswaju Tinubu Bola Ahmed. These are all experiences I've gathered over the time. Because I've also occupied different positions in which I've served the people of the state. The people know and are familiar with my capacity, with my ability to deliver on my mandate. All of this combined will make them to believe me, will make them to trust me. And let me inform you, my expression on this occasion is born out of the agitation of the people upon those states for me to come in as governor of the state. Maybe I should also mention that on the occasions I have contested, like the Bible will say, the eviction is for an appointed time. It, though it may tarry, it will surely come. It appears on those past occasions that the people of those states wanted orderliness, in, that is, rotational order. That was, when, that was why when I contested against Governor Lushegu Mimiko, even though Majority of the people would have preferred me, but because they wanted him to have a second term and establish order for succession in Ondo State, they gave the mandate to him. When I also contested against Governor Akredolu, both as aspirant and consequently as candidate, they also, the people also felt that he should go to the north. Now that there is unanimity of opinion. There is a consensus that the governor, the next governor will come from the south. I stand out among all aspirants as the most experienced, as the most sought after by the people of Ondo State, and someone who has demonstrated consistent in asking for this position. I believe, therefore, that I'm more known to the people of the state more than any other person, and the people of the Ondo state are sympathetic towards my aspiration this time. I have demonstrated integrity. I have de demonstrated consistency in asking for this position. All of these added together give me edge over any other aspirant. The people of the state trust me. They believe me. They know me. They know my capacity. They know my ability. And on this occasion, they are, and they are yearning for my governorship in Ondo State.
What you have called on your party's National Working Committee and the State Working Committee to ensure a free, fair, and transparent election. Do you doubt the credibility of your party to provide a level playing field for all candidates, all aspirants now? Thank you very much. Democracies involving in Nigeria record years back that many things were wrong with even the umpire of our elections. Today, the INEC has improved tremendously in con the conduct of election. In the same manner, a lot of things were wrong with our internal democracy in the past. I think the APC is also coming of age in internalizing democracy. Uh, the adoption of direct primary mode of primary, I think, is a march towards democratization of our process. By this method, all card-carrying financial members of the party will now, part will now participate in the election of the governorship candidate. I have no doubt in my mind about the integrity, the competence of men and women who holds sway in the affair of the party at this moment to conduct a credible primary election. But as aspirant, I should not be wanting or failed in my responsibility to remind them at all times that our victory will be determined by the level of the credibility of the primary election. Merely reminding them is not to cast as passion or to express doubt about their integrity. It's a call to duty on their part to ensure that everybody is treated with fairness, with equity, and that at the end of the day, the outcome of the primary is credible, so that whosoever emerges, all the aspirants will be able to join hand and deliver the party at the general election. So I believe in their fairness, and I believe that it will be just and fair to all concerned. We've had uh, Governor Mimiko from Ondo Central, the late Governor Akarodolo from the North. You are from the South. And uh, the incumbent Governor, Lucky Aidatua, is also from the South. I hear there are rumors that you actually want to step down from this race. Any correctness or truth in that? Come again. There are rumors that you want to step down. I didn't quite get your question. Step Please, down? Yes, there are rumors that you want to step down from this race. Is that true? Oh, rumor. Okay, thank you. I'm happy you called it rumor. It's actually rumor. I am a very bold, courageous, and determined individual. And in this race, I tower above every other aspirant. So if there's going to be need for a step down, it cannot be me, it can only be somebody else. It has never crossed my mind, and I told you earlier that my aspiration is propelled by the nyani of the people of Ondo State. I am not about to disappoint them. And therefore, it is absolute rumor coming from the pit of hell that I intend to step down for anyone. It is not correct, it cannot be correct, and it will never be true. Your party will only be able to put forward one candidate in this election, and uh, of course, that individual will then have a running mate. If, as you have said, is the turn of the South, and uh, I mean, you weigh the chances, because already now, there is a survey published by a coalition of support groups in your party, the APC, and uh, that survey says that 89% of followers are actually supporting governor and uh, while you have about 65... Again, I, didn't, I didn't get that question. You said what percentage? Yes, 89% of uh, you know, those who took that survey... 89% of what? Supporting... Yeah, so, let me land on my thoughts, please, Mr. Okay. Uh, that survey is published by Coalition of Support Groups in your party, the APC, and 89% of followers support Governor Ayedatiwa. Why 65% support you? Could these figures in any way make you 
uh, want to just say, okay, if, if you think or if you seem to be having the lead, just go ahead and represent our party. Thank you very much. That uh, survey obviously is orchestrated. It's a, it's a tailor-made, designed by interested individuals to mislead, misinform, and cause public mischief. There is no survey in Ondo State that is impartially conducted that will give edge to anyone other than me. My campaign organization has stoutly rejected that survey. It is biased. It is opinionated. It is tailored. It is cooked. It is not a true reflection of what is on ground in Ondo State. I want to believe you have taken time out to watch my outings. You will see the enthusiasm with which party members troop out in their thousands to express support for me. A source survey which is designed by the authors cannot take away from the reality what is on, of what is on ground in Ondo State. When the primary election shall be here, you will see the futility, the incorrectness, the wrongness in that survey. It is a make-believe survey. It is incorrect. I hear you. But what if you fail to secure the ticket of your party for this election? What would be your next step? Of course, by the grace of God, I will pick the ticket because that is the prevailing situation in Ondo State today. That is the desire of overwhelming majority that I should pick the ticket. And when I have, will have picked it, the first step will be, of course, to reach out to my compatriots who also participated in the primary to let them know we are brothers, take up on their ideas, for development of the state, do a reconciliation so that all of us can be on the same page. The second step will be because I need, I will need a running mate from another zone of the state is to also beckon on the party to put the situation together to be able to get the best for me. It is not expected that I, as candidate as I will be, we also have the sole prerogative to pick a deputy. When that is done, of course, the next thing will be to put in place the infrastructure for the campaign for the general election. I will also need to put in the public domain before the people of the state my agenda for a new Ondo state, for revamping our economy, for revamping our educational sector, for revamping our infrastructure. I will also put it in the public domain and before the people of Ondo State. It is this agenda which I believe the people desire and deserve that will propel our victory at the election. I appreciate your optimism. I appreciate your optimism. But then, what if it does not go as you have dreamt, as you have hoped? Are you willing to submit to your party's leadership and work with whoever emerges candidate of the APC in the forthcoming Ondo State Governorship election? I don't, uh, I don't like to be negative. I, am, I believe in positive outcome of this primary and uh, I proclaim it and I claim it that it will come out well. But let me assure you and the viewers that I've reached a stage in my life when I cannot be desperate about anything. I started life as a fisherman. I later returned to school. I've reached the pinnacle of my career. I am doing well as a lawyer, as a senior advocate of Nigeria. Of course, that's the only reason I can come out to contest election the number of times I've done. 
Not being desperate. I'm a party man. I've been a party administrator at the highest level. I appreciate party supremacy. And therefore, I will continue to uphold it. I think I've answered your question. All right. So you're saying it's not a do or die affair. You're willing to go by whatever is the outcome of the election. It is not a do or, dare, do, or, do or die affair at all. But I'm very positive in my thinking that surely I will match the candidate. Do you think, I mean, would you say that you have the support of the president, Bola Tinobu, to clinch your party's tickets? Thank you.